for tonight's meditation. I have chosen a text from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 13. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 to 13. Here in four of us. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart. This is the living word of God. Have you ever come across in your life where you are compelled to be the place you don't want to be? Or compelled to do or face the situation you don't like? Are you caught in a life situation that you don't like? Maybe some tragedy or calamity within the family saying, why am I here? Why this situation? This is not my fault. You laid it beautifully. Everything was okay. Everything was doing well. But all of a sudden, you found yourself helpless or sick and asking yourself, what happened? What do you do when God's plan is different from yours? Or what do I do when God's plan is different from mine? Friends, I want you to know that God's best intent is found, or His good plan, or His good purpose is found, even in our worst life events. Therefore, tonight, I'd like to speak on a theme called God's plan. God's plan. When we say plan, it means an intention or decision about what one is going to do, or decide or make arrangement in advance. Here, the purpose and resolution of God's plan concerning for the welfare of the people, particularly for restoration. It implies that God alone who knows everything and has a plan to give hope and future. Now let's look at the background. In this chapter, we see that Jeremiah sent message to the captive in Babylon. The heart of this chapter is a long letter from Jeremiah to the exile who were deported to Babylon in 597 BC. He endeavors to reconcile them to the captivity to be easy under it and make the best of it. Prepare for, for a long stay and warning the Israelites against listening to the false prophets and diviners. He cautions and warns them not to give any credit to the false prophets who feed them with hope of a speedy release. He assures them that God would restore them in mercy to their own land again at the end of 70 years. He prophesies the destruction of two of their false prophets that they had in Babylon. And this is the purpose of Jeremiah's letters to the exile. Now, keeping this brief background in our mind, I would like to draw our attention on three points. Firstly, God has a plan for His people. God has a plan for His people. Verse 11. The word plan means a set of decision about how to do something in the future or an intention or decision about what one is going to do. We often do not know our own thoughts or our own mind. But for God, it is never in any uncertainty within Himself. We are sometimes ready to fear that God's design concerning us are all against us. But He knows what He is doing for His people. And this is an assurance from God that His plan is good. His thoughts are all working toward the expected ends which He will give us in our own due time. Now in verse 11, here He said, God is telling to the Israelite, people who are in captivity in Babylon, Telling them that God would fulfill His gracious promise. A promise to release them from the captivity. To be free from the exile. And now here, exile, it means being banished from one's home or country. And this was the message for them. A plan for welfare and not for harms. A plan for welfare and not for harms. 
The word welfare in the Oxford Dictionary means happiness, fortune of a person. It is the blessing, a life of prosperity and happiness. Exemption from misfortune. And this is what God has been telling to the Israelite people when they are in captivity. Telling them that God will rescue them from the captivity when 70 years is completed in Babylon. But for the Israelite, it was a difficult situation to accept or to hear that. Because the prophecy, the, pro the, the other prophecies has been prophesying that God will rescue them within two years. And why God is saying us to stay in 70 years? So it was difficult for them to accept the reality. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, to the Israeli people, not to worry about this. Stay in Babylon, for it is God who sent you there, Israelite into exile. And it is He who will bring back to Jerusalem again. God is telling the Israelite that He did not abandon His people. God knows the right time, for He knows the plan for them. They are a plan for welfare, a plan to prosper. Maybe not at the present time, but for the children or children's children. God is talking about the future, about the coming days, to keep happiness, to provide blessing upon them and not to bring harm or destruction, but a future and a hope, to grow, to flourish, to excel in life, and not to destroy or bring destruction. Proverbs 23, 18 says, Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 16, 18 says, The heart of man plans his way. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes steps. What do you do when God's plan is different from yours? What do I do when God's plan is different from mine? And this led us to the second point. God's desire to bless his people. God's desire to bless his people. Verse 12. We all want to live a blessed life. And we want to experience the promise and blessing of God. We want to live life where we are free from sickness, disease, and suffering. But we need to understand that God's blessing does not come to us because of our goodness, because of our good deed, but because we are children of God. Because we are God's children. Our God is not uncertain or decisive or tentative in His desire to do well or to bless His people. Instead, He is infinitely powerful with absolute, unbounded and unending, enthusiastic for the fulfillment of His delight. Now in verse 12, here God says, Then when you call upon me, here God is telling to the Israelites that when the expected end is about to be given, when God intend is about to bestow a mercy, the Lord gives the desire people a spirit of praying to ask for. Call upon Him and He will answer the prayer of the people. Now, the Israelite, the people, they are discovering the presence of God, not only in Jerusalem, not only on the temple, but even in Babylon and even in the hardship. And the Lord said, and come and pray to me, I will hear you. God wants His people to have a prayerful life, even in times of the hardship and suffering. Telling the Israelites to pray without ceasing until they enjoy the blessing and have the expected and given to them. God is desired to bless the Israelites and He is willing to listen to their prayer. Friends, our God is a God who hears our prayer. He listens to the requests of His people and He desires to bless His people. And this led us to the third point. God wants to be sought by His people. God wants to be sought by His people. Verse 13. We need to seek God because God is the giver of life. In God, we find purpose, meaning, and satisfaction. If we do not seek God, how can we know Him? If we do not seek God, how will we know better about Him? 
how we will express the life that He has given to us. In the Bible, it has mentioned several times about seeking God. In Matthew chapter 6, 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all things, all these things shall be added to you. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while He may form, call unto Him while He is near. The word seek means it is an attempt to find something or to try, to acquire or gain, to look or to search for. In verse 13, God spoke to Israel through prophet Jeremiah saying, find him and he will be found to them, even in the most foreign land in Babylon. Because the Jewish people in those days thought that the presence of Yahweh is found only in Jerusalem, in the temple, and not in exile. But no, my dear friends, our God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is in Babylon. He is in the temple. He is in the Jerusalem. And He is right now, even here. God is everywhere. And God is telling, if you repay and come and search me, I will be found. I will come to you. I will bring you from the exile. If you seek me, with all your heart. Her seeking requires a lot of focus and daily effort. Not just by one day, not just by one time, not just by one woman. It means God wants the Israelite to be true to Him. He wants the Israelite to seek with all of their heart so that they will prosper in life and restore them. That is the plan of God for the Jewish people. And that is the plan of God for you and me. What do you think was the response, my dear friends, in all this time when God's plan was different from them? Some of them, they complained and some of them, they complied. At first, there were people who turned from the gathering saying that this is not God's word, this is not from the Lord. But there were some who complied. And believe and God accomplished His promise. Friends, even in my life, I have faced many problems where I feel myself rejected, complaining to God. Why I have to face this? Why, Lord, why on me? It was in the year 2011, that was the year where I've experienced failure after failure in my works in my studies, in everything. And since I am, I was from a middle class family. My parents' earning was not sufficient for a family. So we were compelled to work to earn for a family. And I still remember the day when my friends were going to college. I was there on the street working with the laborers. When my friends were sitting on the college buses, I was in the timber truck loaded with logs. I was discouraged at that moment. I feel myself zero, nothing, no future at that point of time. But God spoke to me. Our God is a gracious God. Who knows our future? He spoke to me through this verse. God gave me hope through this verse. Saying that, Taku, why are you complaining about this? I have a better plan for you. For being in that situation, do not think that I have abandoned you. I have taken you, taken you there and I will bring back to you. He gave me strength to walk in every worst situation. When I feel myself helpless, I thought my life going to end in that way. But no, my dear friend, God's plan was different. He totally changed my way. And later, I find God's blessing in me and within my family. And today, here I am standing in front of you all, testifying about Him. This is the plan of God. This is the plan of God. Friends, the choice is yours. It is in your hand whether to keep on complaining, murmuring, or to settle down and find out and listen to God. 
the Israelites, they lost everything. The music, the temple, the worship, everything was gone. Only to discover what is important where they found God. As it says, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. And this, they discover that they don't really need all the things, but they need is God. Even in our life, friends. We may face hardship, trials, and suffering like the Jewish people in Babylon. They lost everything instead of rescuing them within two years. God told them to settle there in Babylon. Eat what they eat. Increase. Do not decrease. And when 70 years is complete, I will come and I will free from them. And don't think that I have abandoned you. Friends, even in our life, God is telling us not to complain, not to murmur what the situation may be. For He knew the plans He has for you and for me. Not to harm, but to give you hope and to prosper in life. Some of us might be sitting here tonight with all these many problems, depression, frustration, thinking why God is not working in my life? Why I have to face this situation? Does God love or care for me at all? You might think that way. You might feel in that way. Our God is a God who knows our future, who knows our tomorrow. And that's why God best intends for. His good purpose, His good plan is for in the worst life events. He is with us even in our worst situation. How are we today, friends? Where are you today? Are you caught in a life situation that you don't like? Are you caught in a life situation that you don't like? Listen to God. God is saying, flourish with whatever God has been given you. Bloom, be fruitful, and be productive. God is saying, wherever you are, stand up from there and go. Maybe God has a better plan. Maybe God's plan will take a longer time. God's front, God wants from you and me is to pray and seek Him with all our heart. Because when we seek Him, we will find Him even in our present situation. Make the best of your situation. Flourish and seek God. For God has a plan not to harm us, but to prosper us. Amen. May God bless us all.